Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Thurp, and this week on Mixing Wednesdays, I have decided to do one last video on aliasing. Okay, this is going to be the last one. Okay, I just want to leave it at this last video. Okay, now the reason why I've decided to make the video is because I've got a tendency to not really explain things that well at times. Okay, and I've spoke about things in previous videos. And if you've not watched it, I assume you've watched it. In a sense, I kind of assume that you know what angle I'm coming from because I assume you've watched one of my previous videos. I understand nobody's got time to sit and watch every one of my videos. So I just thought I'd make one last video just to kind of speak about aliasing and kind of the realities and kind of like really what you need to know about aliasing. Because I don't want anybody to feel that my videos are kind of misleading you uh, a certain way. Okay, so let's get into it. For anybody that doesn't know what aliasing is, there is a video that I've made talking all about aliasing, how to find it, how to spot it, and, all, and how to listen out for it as well. I'll leave a link up and also in the description down below. Now, what I want to make clear, right, and what you need to know about aliasing, right, is that aliasing isn't something that needs to be completely eradicated from the signal, okay? I think a lot of you guys watch me and I'm like, look at that, if you oversample it, there's like basically no alias and it's all gone. Now, I always come off the wrong way uh, when I say this, right? Now, when I say this, right, just, right, have, be patient, okay? Now, what you need to know is that aliasing really only becomes an issue when it's audible. Now, when aliasing is audible, is subjective, depends on your ears and depends if you can hear it. Me and other engineers um, have done tests um, where we've done like aliasing at like minus 80. And we've done side by sides, and we can still pick out which one is which in blind tests. So it's hard to say. I mean, I probably say, I'd say maybe uh, minus 85, minus 80. Could you hear it at minus 90? I don't know. Maybe some engineers can. It's hard to say. I would probably say like minus 80 and above. That is kind of only my subjective opinion of when aliasing might start becoming something that you're going to hear. So a lot of people look at like graphs and stuff, uh, and especially in Plugin Doctor, because you've got to remember that Plugin Doctor goes quite far down, right? It goes sometimes as much like minus 140 dB or whatever it is, okay? So it might look a lot, but if you actually look at where the dB increment is, it's maybe it's like a minus 100, minus 95 dB or something like that. You're not going to hear it. It's like noise. It's like you'll see noise in a plugin, but if it's kept below the audible threshold, then it's going to be fine. You're not going to hear it. So just remember when you're looking at analyzers and I do tests, normally when I say, look at all that aliasing, it's normally because I see some aliasing which I perceive possibly to be in the audible threshold. So aliasing is okay, as, like noise, as long as you can't hear it. Now, <laughs> this is where people want to throw stuff at me. Aliasing is something that is subjective, right? I see aliasing is something that I don't want because I know the effects of it and normally I don't like it. Now, just because I don't like the sound of aliasing doesn't mean it's going to bother you. But, right, in terms of aliasing and the way I speak about aliasing on the channel, the reason I speak about it a lot is because of plugin developers. Plugin developers make very, very bold claims that their plugin is a faithful recreation of the analog gear. Now, as I've shown in that aliasing video, and, you're, and as you'll probably know, aliasing does not exist in the analog realm. It doesn't exist. When your analog device goes into digital, your converter has already lobbed off all that high-end information. All that high-end information that would go past Nyquist, it's already been lobbed off. So when you're going from analog into your converter into digital, there are no higher order harmonics that are going to cause aliasing, right? That's something that you need to know that in terms of aliasing, it, it does not exist in the analog realm, right? All of these guys from the 80s, right, that were using LA2As and Pultex and whatever, all the consoles, all the analog gear that they were using did not have aliasing. It did not exist, right? It did not exist because aliasing is purely a digital artifact. Exact same with like an digital guitar effects as well. It's the same thing. They've all got sample rates and stuff like that, and they'll alias. And many people get very frustrated with me because they're like, Paul, shut up about aliasing. And many people will say to me, 
Paul, how many records have been made with plugins? The alias. How many records have aliasing on them? Now, that's something that, let's be objective about it, we can't prove, we can't say for sure which records don't have aliasing and which records did have aliasing because we don't know what sample rate that the engineer worked at. Just because I'm showing a plugin at 44.1, right, and it aliases, doesn't mean that the engineer that used that same plugin wasn't working at 96K or 192K. You don't know. You just don't know. And in my head, right, if you buy an analog emulation, surely you buy the analog emulation because you're being sold and told by the developers, this thing sounds like the real deal. You want that thing because the engineer that is like endorsing it has said, this is what I use to get this great mix. I love this and I use it all the time. You can't afford right, the gear that costs thousands, she'll get the plugin. However, they don't tell you that there's aliasing in the plugin and it depends on the sample rate that you work at. In many, many Waves plugins, if you work at 96k or 192k, if it allows up to 192k, you'll be, you'll be fine in nearly all instances. Waves plugins are sound absolutely fine. But in reality, right, a lot of you guys do not have computers that are that powerful. Again, money's tight. You make do with what you've got. So a lot of the times, engineers are working at 44.1. It's very, very common. 44.1 is a very, very common sample rate. And sometimes the drawback at using certain plugins at lower sample rates is that you may get audible aliasing, which again is subjective, okay? Aliasing, in my opinion, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to do one last test, one last test, a triple blind test, right? Dry, aliasing, and oversampled. Triple test, three times on the trot, and I'm going to show you me picking out dry, oversampled, and aliasing. And in the end, guys, right, I'm not saying that because you use plugins, the alias, at say, working at 44.1, that your mix is going to sound shit. If it sounds good, it sounds good. All I'm trying to make clear to everybody is that it's a feature of the plugin that you should probably know about because it does impact the sound. I'm going to show you how it impacts the sound. And I'm going to show you that it is audible. And I'm going to try and, f like, finally just leave aliasing as it is but give you an understanding of why I speak about it and why it's important to know. Because in the end, plugins are tools, right? Plugins are tools that you use. The more understanding that you have about your tool, in my opinion, the better you're going to be able to use it, the more you're going to get out of it. As many people say, it's not about the gear, it's about the ear. So for me, I use my ear with a lot of plugins. I know the sound of aliasing and I know I prefer the sound of not having aliasing. I know how it builds up. I know the sound of it. I know how it builds up over many, many tracks. And that's my opinion. It's a topic that sparks a lot of debate. In the end, right, is like one guitar, right, that's aliasing, using a Waves plugin at 44.1 or whatever it is, going to make a difference in the entire mix? Probably not. However, what I may argue is that tons and tons and tons of instances of plugins of say 48 or 44.1 that alias a lot may have more of an effect and that effect will accumulate cumulatively okay I couldn't say that there that effect see if I can say it again that effect will accumulate I can't say it accumulatively accumulatively accumulate I can't fucking Scottish I can hate being Scottish that effect will basically build up and you will hear it I shown it in the tape video last week okay there is a difference and I can hear it. And I'm not going to get into a debate where I'm saying, right, as an authority, as people like to call me, that aliasing is bad and you, like, you should never have aliasing whatsoever in a mix. It's a decision that you make, right? As I've been told by many other people, aliasing has defined many genres. There's many digital effects that have aliasing on them. And the sound suits a lot of genres. Just because it aliases doesn't mean that it's not going to sound good. But, but still having an understanding of the differences of the sound of not having aliasing or having reduced aliasing and having too much of it is probably going to be something that's going to give you another tool in your tool belt. It's going to give you another bow in your armory. It's going to be another level of understanding that you can use. So if you do get to a point where you're using a plugin and you're just like, hmm, this just isn't sounding right. Why is it not sounding right? 
you know what? You might have your input too hot and you're saturating it too much and it's creating loads of aliasing. Hmm. Bring your input down. I'm still not really getting the effect that I want. Okay. Oversample it. DDMF Meta plugin. Take the aliasing out. Ah! There you go. That's the sim that was after. Sim's clearer. Got a little bit more transient in there. A little bit more width in there. Wow. There you go. It's exactly what I wanted. It might not always be what you want, but is it not more beneficial to know if a plugin does alias and if that sim can be improved? That's where I'm trying to come from. I just don't want you to think that because you don't see aliasing whatsoever in analog, does it mean that just because you see a bit of aliasing in an analyzer that's like kind of minus 110 dB, it's like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, I can't use this plugin, right? And again, even if it is like fucking minus 75 dB, again, use your ears, okay? And again, I'm telling you, use your ears. I'm not telling you don't use a plugin because it aliases. And many people will probably be like, well, that's not the impression I get from you. But think about, right, last week's video and then waves in general. What do I always say? I always say, why don't they have oversampling options? So you can choose if you want that SIMD or you don't want that SIMD. If you're selling a plugin and stating that it's faithful to the hardware, and we know that for it to be faithful to the hardware, it can't have audible aliasing in it, and you actually can get a more realistic SIM to the hardware by oversampling it, then why do you not include oversampling? Which is why many people use DDMF Meta plugin to oversample plugins because they want to get closer to the sim that's advertised, right? And in the end, the advertisers, very, very crafty little buggers, they can turn around and say, well, the plugin can get the sim, it can get that faithful sim, but you just have to use a higher sample rate. It, the plugin supported up to 96K, you're using it 44.1. It's not our fault. And know what, guys? I suppose they're kind of right in what they're saying. They're like, oversample it yourself. Use a higher sample rate. The plugin can get that simmed. We are not telling you which sample rate to work at. So in a sense, they're throwing it back to you guys, but they're not giving you the information. They're not telling you that the plugin will alias at say 44.1 and you, you won't really have any audible aliasing at 96k. And to get the best simmed, you need to use a higher sample rate. They don't tell you that. They just mark it and bundle the plugin and go, there you go. Bang on. Sounds exactly like the hardware. Faithful recreation. It's the hardware in the box. Analog with a sound of analog. Would you believe it? So, to sum up before I end this video, okay, I just want to make it very clear, right, that I'm not saying that aliasing is something that should be completely eradicated, okay? It is up to you. All I'm saying is that I will continue to do aliasing tests, all right? I'll continue to test because I think it's important for you to know and to understand when buying your plugin because it's another feature of the plugin. It's another tonal element of the plugin that you might not know, and it might be important for you to know if you expect or you want a certain sim. Now, for this test, I've used the Lindell 50 channel, because guess what? In the manual, what does Tobias Lindell say? Oversampling, because there is aliasing issues. He's telling you there's aliasing issues in the plugin. So as I said earlier, it's a triple blind test, right? Dry, oversampling, and aliasing three times. And I'm going to tell you right now, the reason that I could tell them apart is because the aliasing, in my opinion, sims the smallest and the weakest. I feel that the feel is completely gone. Genuinely, I prefer the dry over the Lindell. And it's just running through the plugin, by the way. It's just running through. The compressors are not even working. Okay? They're not even working. It's genuinely just running through the plugin with the THD, maybe like fucking three quarters or whatever. So we're still getting a bit more saturation. Right? It's really, really simple. It's just running through the plugin. And I know loads of people are going to be like, How can I tell the difference over YouTube? Oh my God. Like, the YouTube, like Kodak. Like, oh my God. Like, oh my God. Stop it. Stop it. I don't know. I don't know sometimes. <laughs> but either way, right? It is what it is, right? If, like, if you're moaning about the YouTube algorithm, fucking do, do the test yourself. It'll take you five minutes. Just fucking do it. It'll take you five minutes, right? I still think you're going to hear the difference. By the way, just for anybody that's fucking going to moan either, here are the sweeps as well, right? Okay, here are the sweeps. As you can see, no oversampling. Times four, oversampling. So as you can see, all you need in this instance is times four oversampling. So all you need, you don't need times 16 or anything. Times four will be enough to remove nearly all the aliasing, right? It's audible. So, my name is Paul Thurt. 
hopefully we've been able to clear things up about alias in and I'm able to get my point across okay alias in right it's subjective but I still think it's something important to know especially if you're dealing with saturation in the box so guys if you like the video like the video eh if you're not subscribed just subscribe eh my name's Paul Third and I'll see you again next week <laughs>